Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bito. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 283 of Mexico Unexplained where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Pitto. In the realm of Maya archaeology, the names Stevens and Catherwood are legendary. The two Americans traveled together through the Yucatan and Central America in the 1840s and were oftentimes the first non-locals to explore ruined ancient cities. One such city was Caba located 87 miles south of Merida, the capital of the Mexican state of Yucatan. While in a nearby town, the two had heard of Caba from a local and set off to find it. John Lloyd Stevens wrote detailed descriptions of his travels with Catherwood in a popular book at the time titled Incidents of Travel in Yucatan. He describes their approach to the ruins of Caba on an old milpa or cornfield path. He writes, quote, Following this path toward the field of ruins, the Teokali is the first object that meets the eye, grand, picturesque, ruined, and covered with trees like the house of the dwarf at Ushmal, towering above every other object on the plain. It is about 180 feet square at the base and rises in a pyramidal form to the height of 80 feet. At the foot is a range of ruined apartments. The steps are all fallen and the sides present a surface of loose stones difficult to climb, except on one side where the ascent is rendered practicably by the aid of a tree. The top presents a grand view. I ascend it for the first time toward evening when the sun was about setting and the ruined buildings were casting lengthened shadows over the plain. At the north, south, and east, the view was bounded by a range of hills. In part of the field was a clearing in which stood a deserted rancho, and the only indication that we were in the vicinity of man was the distant church in the village of No Kakab. Leaving this mound, again taking the Milpa path and following it to the distance of three or four hundred yards, we reached the foot of a terrace 20 feet high, the edge of which is overgrown with trees. Ascending this, we stand on a platform 200 feet in width by 142 feet deep, and facing us is the building represented in plate 15. On the right of the platform as we approach this building is a high range of structures ruined and overgrown with trees, with an immense back wall built on the outer line of the platform, perpendicular to the bottom of the terrace. On the left is another range of ruined buildings, not so grand as those on the right, and in the center of the platform is a stone enclosure 27 feet square and 7 feet high, like that surrounding the Picote at Ushmal but the layer of stones around the base was sculptured, and on examination we found a continuous line of hieroglyphics. In the center of the platform is a range of stone steps 40 feet wide and 20 in number, lending to an upper terrace on which stands the building. This building is 151 feet in front, and the moment we saw it, we were struck with the extraordinary richness and ornament of its facade. In all the buildings of Ushmal, without a single exception, up to the cornice which runs over the doorway, the facades are of plain stone, but this was ornamented from the very foundation, two layers under, the lower cornice to the top. End quote. In the last part, Stevens was describing the Palace of the Masks, known in Yucatec Maya as Kodzpu'up, which loosely translates to rolled matting in English. This is due to the massive repetition of the stone mosaic designs on the face of the building that are interspersed between the hundreds of faces of the curled nose rain god Chalk. Most would agree that this is quite possibly the most ornate and unique building in the entire Maya world. 
Each mask of chalk on the outside wall of the palace is comprised of 30 carefully carved mosaic stones. Archaeologists have found evidence of copal incense in the noses of the stone chalk masks. One can only imagine the ceremony and pageantry surrounding this building in the height of Kaaba's importance. So when exactly did this magnificent city flourish? The ancients started building at this site in the 3rd century BC. The main flurry of monumental building at Kaaba took place between 600 and 1000 AD, with its apex around 900 AD. The oldest date thus found any place in the city reads a date of 987 AD. Kaaba seemed to last a little longer than most other cities in the Yucatan through the Maya collapse, and no one knows exactly why. Kaaba is one of the few ancient Maya sites whose modern name is the same as the name it called itself in its heyday. The name Kaaba means strong hand in an older dialect of Maya. Some researchers suggest that the name was shortened and at one time the city called itself Kaaba Aukan, which translates loosely to royal snake in hand. There is a curious masculine male stone statue at the site, either a man or a deity, known to archaeologists as M1. This bold, muscular figure is clenching his fist, and this is believed to be a physical representation of the name of the site, either Strong Hand or Royal Snake in Hand. As with other Maya city-states at the time, Kaaba made war off and on with its neighbors, and valiant battles and the triumphs of Kaaba's kings are beautifully illustrated throughout the city on the sides of public monuments. At different times in its history, Kaaba may have either been under the influence of, or was directly controlled by, Ushmal, which is only some 15 miles to its northwest. For more information about this ancient Maya kingdom, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 181, titled Ushmal, Lost City of the Dwarf. Archaeologists are a bit puzzled why people began building a settlement at the site of Kaaba in the early centuries BC. There are few local resources to exploit, and there is no reliable water source, no cenote or river, in the immediate vicinity. The lack of immediate ground or surface water was probably why there was such a big emphasis on the rain god Chalk at Kaaba. The city, with a population numbering into the thousands at its height, was nearly 100% reliant on rainwater, and many water catchment systems were incorporated throughout the city that still exist today. A prolonged drought in the area may have led to the city's abandonment and also may have had a hand in the overall collapse of the Maya civilization. Researchers are still trying to understand what happened here, but it is clear by around 1100 AD, Kaaba was abandoned. In addition to the three-tiered palace of the masks previously described, Kaaba contains many other impressive structures and architectural elements. Most of the site was fashioned in what researchers call the Puk style, common among the classic Maya sites throughout the Puk region of the Yucatan. Kaaba also has some elements of the Chene style, which came later to the region. Two gigantic stone arches mark the entrances to the city. There are three main building clusters at Kaaba. The eastern group contains the Palace of the Masks at its southern end. This group includes a plaza, and in that plaza is what archaeologists call the hieroglyphic altar. This was briefly mentioned in the passage by John Lloyd Stevens. This altar, really a low platform structure, contains almost 150 stone blocks with ancient inscriptions detailing Kaaba's history. Because of the variety in styles, researchers believe that multiple artists created the hieroglyphic altar, possibly over many decades. All the inscriptions have not yet been translated and may prove to be a treasure trove of information. The Northwest Group, sometimes called the North Group, sits on a ridge which forms the highest point in the city. The structures of this group overlook Kaaba to the east with direct view to the Palace of the Masks. 
These buildings were most likely reserved for members of the noble or priestly classes. Among these unrestored buildings is Kaaba's Great Pyramid. It is near this pyramid where the sock bay, or slightly raised stone causeway, begins that goes all the way to the city of Ushmal, nearly 15 miles to the northeast. To the west of the northwest group is the appropriately named west group, containing two clusters of buildings now undergoing restoration. On the wall of one of the structures of the west group is a series of painted red hands of various sizes and hues. Scholars are baffled as to their meaning. Stevens and Catherwood noted something exceptional at Kaaba that deserves special attention. When they arrived and started clearing the vegetation at the site, they discovered several large wooden door jams and lintels that were completely intact and elaborately carved. The two Americans were astonished to see massive wooden items like these that had survived the many centuries of exposure to the elements. The explorers removed some of these beautifully carved wooden pieces, and others were whisked away by later collectors and museum procurers. Many are now lost, or have become damaged in the care of others. Archaeologists today are as amazed as Stevens and Catherwood were at how these hardwood pieces were carved with rudimentary stone tools. Kaaba was declared a Yucatan State Park in 1993, and at that time only a fraction of the city had been cleared of forest growth, even though serious restoration of the site began in the year 2003. Most of Kaaba is still unexplored and overgrown, with only the East Group, home to the Palace of the Masks, fully open to tourists. With much exploration and research still to be done here, Kaaba has yet to reveal it's many untold secrets. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the books, Mexico Unexplained and Mexican Monsters, to get hard copies of the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, thank Thank you and gracias. Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at MexicoUnexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.